Hi. Towards the back end of the 1970s and in the early 80s, uh, a movement sprang up in the heavy metal genre called the New Wave of British Heavy Metal. At the forefront of this uh, new movement were bands such as Iron Maiden, uh, Def Leppard and of course the Mighty Saxon. And I'm delighted to be here today with Mr Graham Oliver. Yeah! Nice one Gary. <laughs> I'm going to play through some licks and play some uh, the Saxon riffs that got coined and became quite memorable. <laughs> Downstrokes, that's what we did in those days. Chose from the vintage range one of the, the Metal Axe uh, series, the Metal Axe Raider guitar. Yeah. Um, what was it about this guitar that appealed well, to you? Well, this guitar solo was like Dallas 1pm. I used the SG with the woman tone on the neck pickup, and then halfway through the guitar solo, click into the treble pickup. And you can do this on this guitar. Even Slash took that off me and started doing his woman tone, ran it off Clapton. <laughs> It's a guitar, it's like a it's like one of those uh, all in one Swiss knives. <laughs> it does everything, you can pull somewhere out of it different totally every time. So it and it's all locks up, it's perfect for the motorcycle. <laughs> Of scale when you do that, you know, like, and that sort of became my trademark the motorbikes for uh, uh, motorcycle man. It's been emulated lots of times, but again, you know, it's something that um, you couldn't do without this kind of guitar, and uh, it does, this does it in spades. For riffs, then we later albums were doing things like um, Back on the Street. <laughs> That's why it was played in such a way where somebody else would probably figure it. But when Steve writes something or we wrote something together, we, we try to keep the same inversions. Like this one, these people have trouble with this one. <laughs> Like that, we all put a little bit of uh, input into them. Oh, it used to, group effort. Yeah, yeah, proper group effort, and it used to work really great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah Princess Nights, that's, that's uh, Summer Princess of the Night. In fact, the bit that I wrote was Nick from By Metallica for uh, <laughs> Into Their Song. Just for the uh, camera, that we do not oh. uh, endorse any of these opinions, they're all totally grooms. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's we change it. So it inspired, seek, and destroy. <laughs> Like an old time 
rock and roll type feel, but you know, I was quite his guitar solo, it sounded really, you know, he was doing all that screaming stuff. And then I did second solo or uh, main riff. Uh, right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, we inspired Metallica, let's go. It does sound kind of familiar, though. It does, it does. Bands played on, that was quite a big hit. Yeah, bands played on. Uh, I coined that. Um, off the old Robin Trower song, Whiskey Train, which Robin Trower and Whiskey Train were. And uh, it was Pro Clarum that Robin Trower did that in, uh, when he was in, right. in that band, which one of our other endorsees, I've seen him playing it on a vintage guitar. Uh, <laughs> what was in Pro Mr. White Oh, Mr. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> so what I did, I went. <laughs> Biggest singles we wrote that all about uh, Donington. I think it got to number 11 yeah. in the charts. And uh, See the Rainbow Shooting Rockets to the Sky is the firework display that Richie Blackmore organised at the end of the show. Sure. Another riff that were really uh, just simple riffs. The simple ones you'll define what, what, what I did because I'm a bit simple. <laughs> 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 simple thing, I suppose. <laughs> Quinny's riffs were really busy and he's got a really juggly, juggly, juggly feel. Uh, and how fast that. Um, Princess of the Night was, you know, yeah. that, that Quinny all down, tried doing that all down strokes at speed that Quinny did it. It's like boggles your hand up. But um, we, we once were driving through uh, Whitehall and we, were, we pulled up beside of Margaret Thatcher and she were, in, she were Prime Minister then in her car and we got, we had a big American car and immediately all these security people made us pull over to the side of the road, you know, and stop, get out, you know, we yeah. had a strong hour. and. They made a search just because they thought it was some kind of, I don't know what they thought, it was some kind of beatniks in a big American car. <laughs> so we went to the studio and wrote the song uh, Strong Arm of the Law, which started with, uh, I don't think I'll better do it on this one. <laughs> then Steve came in with his bass again, bump de dum and then I just did a riff. <laughs> So it was an inspiration, I mean, Cat's Crash Feet became Wheels of Steel, you know. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, <laughs> But I think you'll find that nearly every guitarist who writes a song is always uses something as a springboard. Mm -hmm. Another one off Wheels of Steel was Stand Up and Be Careful. <laughs> Thank you, and I'll bring Steve next time. Excellent. Okay. Cheers. Thank you.